Greetings and welcome. My name is Aaron Craig with Beyond Us Games, and this is another update for Game Maker Studio release notes that I want to go over because this one, version 2.2.2.413, adds a really, really useful functionality that will hopefully help a lot of new programmers and even experienced ones uh, fix common errors that I have to, a lot of time, uh, explain to people exactly what it is and that that is their error. So this one, I think I'm a little late to the party because it released on the 25th of March and it's like the 8th of April, but I'm still going to cover it because it's awesome. So they added some startup checking as well. So if you've been having any problems with, with Game Maker Studio running, they've added in a lot more help checks for file sequences and checking like uh, if your antivirus is messing with your software. So hopefully if you've been having any of those issues, this will give you helpful pop-up messages that will walk you through how to fix that. If you use Spine, they've added some major support and a lot of issues that were a problem for that. So definitely check that out if you use Spine. I don't and I don't have a lot of experience, otherwise I'd go more into it. Uh, they've done a lot with the font editor, so you can use more built-in fonts, you can preview fonts that have been changed outside of Game Maker Studio, so if you're using like a custom font and you've made a change to it there, you can then have it refresh the button so that you can see it inside of Game Maker Studio too, like in the font editor, which is really nice. Uh, the really nice thing here though is uh, the code editor extended syntax checking. So the thing that they've added is warning messages for single use or unused variables and this is usually because of typos and I will say that like 70% of the error messages that I respond to both in my courses and on YouTube are these errors so this is really exciting and I'll show you what this means so if we have an object in here and it has a bunch of variables so if I add a variable uh, say my message equals hello world and uh, we want to say anything we want well right away we're gonna see that this comes up because this variable it says that it's only reference once which that makes sense because we've made it once and then we're not using it anywhere but if we go in and we say we want to show this message and we want to show my message that error will go away because it's now being used somewhere else. This is actually syntax error checking that's in a lot of other IDEs for programming, so it's great that's finally come here. Now, the thing that will come up is if we misspell something, like a typo, it's going to pop up on that line as well. So this variable on line three is only being referenced once. And if you see this error and you're like, but it's not because I made it up here, that means you've made a typo of some kind. So I've messed up an S here, or I didn't capitalize my M, something like that. You can see that it still turns blue because it's a variable and it knows that, but it also knows that it's not being referenced anywhere else. So this, I think, is super, super helpful. And I'm really excited because uh, you'll no longer be able, well, you'll probably still get that error message if you ran this, uh, the one that a variable has not been initialized yet, but hopefully this will eliminate a lot of people coming across that error because now they can see that. If you don't want to see that error, you can go to File, Preferences, Languages, and GML, and you can actually uh, enable and disable variable reference warnings. I would keep it enabled because even experienced programmers can make a typo and this is just really, really helpful. You can also change the number of syntax errors to display. By default, I think it's set to 50, but you can lower it or increase it. And they've also made the syntax checking rely more on the CPU, so you don't have to have a graphically intensive computer in order to get better performance now. So that's a really good thing too. Uh, another update that they added is in the room editor you can edit the starting values and see the frame and animation speed which is really cool so you've always been able to do a lot inside of the the, the editor in here but now they've added the frame and image speed down here so you can have it start on a different frame and you can see i didn't change the color drastically but mine are a different color uh frame between frame zero and one and you can set each instance to have a different frame to start 
and each instance to have a different image speed. So that's a pretty cool thing, just a nice little touch. And then of course they've added a bunch of um, debugs and they've added more game options, stuff like that. So if you had any issues, hopefully this will fix some of that. So definitely update, uh, and I really encourage you to update this version just to get that syntax one-time variable use checking because I am hoping that that will help a lot of beginners uh, overcome that specific problem, which is really exciting for me because hopefully that will free up more of my time. So definitely update, check it out. That's what it is. Uh, it's pretty cool. I'm excited to see that uh, they're doing a lot and they've also announced uh, some upcoming changes to GML and there's a lot of really cool stuff that they're working on to make GML into a more fully fleshed out programming language, which is really cool. And I'll be doing a video to cover that in the future. But that's what I've got for you today. So thanks for joining me. And as always, have fun making great games and I will talk to you later. Hey there, it's Aaron. I hope you enjoyed that video, and if you did, I encourage you to check out my Patreon. You can join for as little as a dollar a month and get access to our Discord channel and be able to vote on the next series that I tackle. You'll also be able to do one-on-one -on -one training sessions for $10 a month or more if you want more time with me. We can work on whatever it is you're struggling with and I can help you make that awesome game or project. You'll also get access to my courses. Every time I publish a new course on Udemy or Skillshare, every one of my patrons gets that course for free. So even if you support me for just $1 a month, that's a great steal because I'm going to be putting out a lot more courses this year. I want to do YouTube, Udemy, teaching, game development full-time, and you can help make that happen. So thank you very much. I hope you'll check out my Patreon and consider supporting me on there. And check out my courses on Udemy and Skillshare if you're wanting more content from me. Have fun making great games, and I'll talk to you later.